For this video, we're going to explore the question types called multiple, or matching, and also ordering. And they're somewhat similar, but there are a few key differences. Looking at the ordering question type first, and here I've already created an example ordering question, we're going to have our usual options of having a question title and a description. Now for the description, what is, is it they're going to actually be doing? What is the question? And the question for this example is, what is the proper workflow for creating a test? And then the answers, in other words, that proper sequence needs to be listed in the actual order right here on this answers page. And when you hit next, that's when you then go to the next page where you can choose the order in which these will be displayed. So we're going to go ahead and uh, even tell them that, hey, when you take this test, use the drop down for each phrase and mark that step number a phrase represents. So this is our directions for interacting with this question type right here, and then the actual question. And then the answers to that question in the sequence, they should actually be listed. Now when we hit next, here is our correct sequence over on the left hand side. And we can now choose the display order over on the right, simply by going over any of these um, phrases and dragging them up and down. And remember that, that this question type is more designed for um, examining phrases. It's not designed for rearranging words to make a phrase. Those types of questions would be better off with the jumbled sentence question type. So for ordering, we're looking more at ordering processes to get to an endpoint from point A. And then we have our feedback for a correct response and then an incorrect response. And then we can go ahead and hit um, again categories or notes. We can do if you so want. And then to actually deploy this ordering question, you go ahead and hit submit, like so. Now I haven't mentioned it, but whenever I make a new question to test its actual functionality, I'll go ahead and drag that question to the very top of my quiz so that it's always the first example that I see. And so it makes testing new question types very easy and intuitive. Uh, just make sure that your test overall does not or is not set to randomized presentation or random order. So here we have our ordering example as the instructor sees it. So here's the displayed order that we've chosen, and then here's the correct order. And then from the user perspective, they would see this. And here we have the user view where we have our question, we have our directions, and then here are our four phrases that describe an overall process. And above each phrase is a drop down where we choose numbers. So is this phrase the first, second, third, or fourth? step in this overall process. And they would go ahead and choose those numbers based off of whatever they think the order should be. For a matching question type, we have our title and our directions. And what we do is we have some options here that are going to be pretty important. So we can allow for partial credit and we can also give them a negative score for incorrect answers. So maybe we're going to start taking away points for guessing incorrectly. And then for the answers you're going to list, you do have to choose a hierarchy type. So you can do numbers, numerals, uppercase letters, lowercase letters, so on and so forth. I'm going to go with the default uppercase. And the way that this works is we have, we're going to have two columns. So in one column, we're going to have our questions over here on the left hand side. And over on the right, we're going to have the list of answers. And each question, has a question and then an associated answer. So what color is the sky at noon? Well, the answer would be blue. And combined, these two create an answer pair. And you can have as many as you want. So you can have as few as one and as many as 100. And you can simply change this number to increase answer pairs or click on the remove button to delete an answer pair. Just make sure that when you add or delete an answer pair, you have to update the partial credit button by touching this icon here if you're using partial credit because the partial credit will not have reflected the new change in question answer pairs. And it'll tell you too if, if you do that. So Now what makes these so interesting is you can have as many questions as you have answers, 
But if you're going to have two questions that share the same answer, you don't want to have that same answer listed twice because it's going to confuse students and you're going to have a lot of problems with it. So instead what you can do is if you notice under each of these question answer pairs, we have a checkbox called reuse answer choice. And if we check that, we get the option, well first off, two things happen. We lose the answer to our question because we're going to be borrowing it from a different question pair set. In this case, our question is, what is the color of cobalt? When the answer is blue, that answer comes up here from question pair 1. So I go ahead and check on, I check reuse answer choice, and then we go ahead and select question pair 1 from our menu. And then what you can do is, again, you have the option for giving them feedback on if they are correct or incorrect on the overall level. You can't do individual feedback with this type. And yeah, so that's pretty much all the options that exist here. So question answer pair, one answer for each question. If you're going to be reusing answers, you have to then go into the question whose answer will be repeated and click on the reuse answer checkbox and then choose the question set to borrow from. And additionally, you have the option of having your answers, not your questions, but your answers. Your questions will always be in the same order that you list here, one, two, three. But the answers can be randomized over on the right-hand column. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Submit. And in our test, this is what that matching question looks like. So we have what is the color of the sky, so here's our question. Here's the drop box where we choose which of these answers matches the question. So in this case we have um, iron and then blue. And again, the, the order of your answers will be randomized each time the student takes this question. So what color is the sky? Is it A or B? Well, B. And the chemical symbol for iron is going to be A. And then the last question, what the color of cobalt? Blue. So because these two questions share the same answer, this is why we actually manually make them share the same answer. That's pretty much all there is to it as far as making an ordering or a matching question. I find the ordering, or I find matching to be pretty powerful. The ordering one I'm not too fond of, but that's just my own personal preference. And again, it's your test. You have the ultimate control of how you design it.